Hey everyone, it's Dave. Thanks so much for tuning in as always. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Rocket Lab's Space Systems Division, which comprises well over half the amount of revenues the company brings in, but it gets a lot less attention than the launch side of the business. And I know this makes a lot of sense. I mean, launch is pretty cool, let's face it. Who doesn't love watching rockets and talking about them, seeing the explosions, talking about all the new technology and plans they have, especially now that we're in this new age of reusability and everyone seems to have this cool new idea. So there's lots of different rockets to compare and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, Space Systems right now, as I said, is still over half the revenues of the company. It's a very important part of the business. It's really the main reason I am invested in Rocket Lab up to this point, to be frank. Uh, if Rocket Lab did not have the Space Systems business, I probably wouldn't be invested in the company if they only had Electron and Neutron. Of course, another reason we talk about Neutron so much is the massive amount of R&D spend it takes to bring a new rocket online and Rocket Lab is just in the middle of that right now. So Neutron is obviously causing massive cash burn to the balance sheet and therefore, you know, it bears watching closely to make sure that this investment is paying off. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the total addressable market of the space systems business is actually much, much larger than the total addressable market of launch. By 2030, Rocket Lab has said that they expect their total addressable market, or TAM, to reach $1 trillion for the industries they play in. Of that, launch is looking to be just around $200 million, or one-fifth of the overall TAM of the company. So Space Systems by far has the largest room to grow and where more revenues can come from in the future. So I have to say I'm extremely happy with how the Space Systems side of the business has been performing lately. Not only do they deliver reliable income, unlike launch, which is subject to lots of lumpy periods of low cadence or high cadence or anomalies, uh, that Space Systems side of the business reliably delivering income every quarter. But they've also recently made the huge jump from being a subcontractor to a, one of the few prime contractors in the space industry. And a lot of people don't seem to realize how big a deal this really is. As they keep climbing that vertical integration ladder, each step along the way allows them to capture more and more revenues at higher and higher margins. To start with, they were just supplying components for other people to build their satellites with, whether that was solar panels, reaction wheels, separation systems, flight software, or any of the other many components that they still offer today. However, eventually they switch to being a contractor capable of building out satellites and the biggest contract from this was that massive global star deal for 138 plus million dollars that they signed just in 2022. In that contract, they were actually subcontracted by MDA and their portion of the deal was to build out and design the spacecraft's buses, which is the main body of the satellite. This was a shocking deal at the time as Rocket Lab had not ever managed to land any huge contracts like this and a lot of people in the industry were taken aback at how quickly Rocket Lab had grown. But even though that contract was so amazing, they still only received 143 million of the 327 million dollars up for grabs on this contract. MDA, a Canadian company, as the prime contractor would still be receiving the bulk of the revenues and only subcontracting out a certain portion to Rocket Lab. But now, with this new contract from the SDA as a prime contractor, they are in full control of the show. They can use all their own components, make all the decisions as long as the satellite is delivered properly and to spec. It's really their show to run. And that means they receive all the revenues, or at least the portions they don't want to subcontract out. This contract is actually much larger than that groundbreaking Global Star One was last year, worth 500 plus million dollars, and Rocket Lab has access to all of it, not just a portion. As a prime contractor, they join a list of just a few massive companies that can handle these types of huge contracts, and it's really exciting to see them join that list. 
We're talking about massive companies like Thales with a market cap of $28 billion, L3 Harris with a market cap of almost $40 billion, or Lockheed Martin with a market cap of over $100 billion. Now, of course, Lockheed does other things, as do some of those other companies, but these are still big boys in the industry, and Rocket Lab is now joining their ranks. Rocket Lab is currently sitting at a market cap of around $2.5 billion, and I'm not saying they're about to jump to $40 billion like Harris or one of these other companies, but it just goes to show the large amounts of room there is to grow only from space systems. If you compare that to, say, the small launch market with Electron, Rocket Lab already is the big boy in that pond, the big fish in that pond, and there's not really potentially that much room to grow compared to space systems, or at least it's really unknown because the industry is just kind of growing. There have been no real small launchers before Rocket Lab's Electron operating regularly on the commercial markets. So while Electron is still super cool, I still love the vehicle, I love to watch the launches, and it still is an important contributor to revenues for Rocket Lab, I do think that Space Systems deserves a lot more attention. Oh, and by the way, those were just the values of all those companies today. But if you think about how fast the space industry is growing and how much of a tailwind that is for not only those companies, but Rocket Lab as well, that could really boost the growth of Rocket Lab and the whole industry in the future. I mean, just think about, we have a new space race beginning here with China, both countries trying to go to the moon, talk of a Chinese space space station the iss is getting old we're looking at commercial space stations beginning to come online we have starlink coming online which no they don't you know use rocket lab parts or anything like that but that massive investment has actually caused a response from other companies who want to compete with Starlink. So because Starlink exists, we now also have the likes of Amazon's Kuiper and all these other responses, as well as various nations, governments, and militaries looking for all sorts of different constellations out there. It's a booming industry, and even though I expect Rocket Lab to grow faster than the overall industry, the fact that that industry is growing and looking like it's poised for such massive growth is an even greater sign of the future. Of course, part of this has to do with dropping launch costs and Neutron plans to participate in that. But yeah, with the advent of re reusable rockets and all these commercial rockets driving down costs massively, all sorts of interesting use cases and businesses have come online that just didn't make sense previously, whether we're talking about like an impulse space, a planet labs, all these different players coming online where it just wasn't commercially feasible before. So it's a very exciting time for the space industry. The whole industry is poised to continue growing Growing massively in the future and of course Rocket Lab building out those satellites and components for these companies will definitely benefit from it on the space system side and we also have data to prove that space systems is on a good path if you look back to when Rocket Lab went public all the way in 2021 with their SPAC the revenue of space systems has actually dwarfed the revenue growth of the launch side of the business in their presentation in September 2021, they revealed that they had made $8.5 million from launch and just $300,000 from space systems. And now today we can see those numbers, while they have both grown, they're flipped, and space systems is delivering the bulk of the revenues. We're talking about 40 plus million dollars on space systems compared to just 300,000 two years ago. I mean, it's really wild, and that's in a single quarter. Meanwhile, launch in the past quarter was more like $20 million. So not that massive growth on an $8.5 million figure. Now, I know a fair criticism for this might be, well, yeah, but they just bought that revenue growth because they brought in all these separate companies that used to be external. And sure, they did, but those were very savvy acquisitions, and it's definitely a case of the sum of the parts being more than they are individually as they all come together to allow Rocket Lab to build these spacecrafts. And if you think about the money being spent on Neutron, I mean, it's not as if you can say that space systems benefited from, you know, outsized spending compared to launch. No, they're spending more money on Neutron than they did on most of these acquisitions for the most part which I do believe will pay dividends down the road, but space systems so far ahead of the game already expanding and building out that scale. Those acquisitions are absolutely looking brilliant right now. 
Even that Solero business, which some people like to criticize because it has lower gross margins, although those are improving, uh, solar is so rare and it just allows them to build out these satellites, have the capability, because if you don't have the power generation for your satellite, you really got nothing. You can't launch it without that. So a very key component, even if the margins are a little smaller, it's allowed them to land some of these important contracts. So back on the rocket side of the business that we're always talking about so much, there's always some hyped up company talking about what they're going to do next. It's always stressful. We're always worried about what the next big thing is. Even going back to the days where Astra was talking about how they were going to ro launch their Rocket 3.3 system every single day. People were worried about that. Oh, they're going to be the electron killer. Or we had Virgin Orbit who are going to launch from airplanes saying that they didn't even need normal launch infrastructure, including a launch pad. They could just launch from a lightly modified airport and that they were going to be the next big thing. Well, not so much both those companies are either bankrupt or look like they're very close then we have fireflies alpha rocket which is a bigger vehicle some people talking about well maybe they'll push electron out of business with their larger vehicle which by the way isn't even reusable but that rocket has not had a good track record as of yet they've had four launches only one has been fully successful and they've had a couple partial successes where the payload didn't meet the correct orbit so may so pretty much a failure um Obviously, Firefly is still working on that rocket, and they could still turn things around. But yeah, that's another one that I'm not really that concerned by when it comes to Electron. And then, of course, we had Relativity talking about how they're going to 3D print their entire rockets, make everything so much cheaper. They had their Terran 1 rocket was going to be fully 3D printed. They canceled that almost immediately. They were going to do a fully reusable larger rocket, fully 3D printed as well, called Terran R. They had to radically redesign that, scrap the a lot of the 3D of printing scrapped the upper stage reusability and uh, that was going to be the neutron killer definitely no longer clear that that's the case and then that brings us to to today we're talking about Starship a lot we're talking about Stoke Space as the next big killer that's going to come out with a fully reusable vehicle and these both are very exciting vehicles I'm not going to lie but Stokes never reached orbit Starship is a massive vehicle and looks like it can be very capable, but I don't think it's gonna be the entire industry, nor does the government want to rely on a single vehicle for absolutely everything. So yes, yeah, Starship is exciting, Stoke is exciting, but you know what, Rocket Lab's been over there executing for years the number two launcher in the United States by a wide margin when it comes to commercial launchers, and it's not even close, number two to SpaceX. So. While there's a lot of stress on the launch side, while there can be a lot of hype around new vehicles and new ideas on the launch side, and that's to be expected because launch is really the gateway to space and the gateway to unlocking all this space systems revenue we've been talking about today. Um, space systems is why I sleep so soundly at night and I'm not stressed at all about this Rocket Lab investment. I wouldn't have bought the company if they didn't have this. It's going to be a key part of Rocket Lab's future growth. They're going to eventually build out their own satellite constellation and operate those. I haven't even gotten into that and the potential recurring revenue they can get from operating their own satellites and selling the data or whatever they provide as opposed to building out these satellites for other people. That's going to unlock an even higher step on that vertical integration ladder and allow them to capture even higher margin recurring revenue which is really what you want to see almost SaaS like revenue from for the company so that's my current thoughts on space systems i just wanted to talk a little bit about it today because it really doesn't get enough attention and yes starship is coming stoke may be coming the it's great to see the launch industry is ongoing is undergoing such a massive transformation, driving down the cost to orbit, and it's really gonna benefit the entire industry. It's driving all sorts of new investments in space now that these companies can do things that before wouldn't have been feasible, and that benefits the entire launch industry, driving even more investments and in competition. And Rocket Lab will be capturing some of those tailwinds with their space systems business, building out satellites for other people, whether it's SDA, whether it's Apple with their Global Star Constellation for their SOS communication on their iPhones. Uh, the future of space systems is very exciting. It's growing very rapidly. 
manufacturing capacity has been growing hugely. I think their acquisitions have paid off brilliantly. And uh, I just wanted to shine a bit of a spotlight on that today. So if you found this video interesting, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and hit like. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about the space systems, where you think the future lies with Rocket Lab building out their satellites. That's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.